Okay, gonna continue with some UEFI, EFI development here. Not quite a bootloader yet. Slowly but surely we'll get there. So what are we doing today? I want to start off with some smaller things and then get into actually making a GOP and maybe getting mouse support, depending on how long that takes. But start off with a couple smaller things. Just gonna go into here. I kind of do want to make this sort of eprintf to print to standard error. And I want to combine the print hex and int functions to one function. Because I just don't like there being, you know, needless duplication there. Kind of bugs me a little bit. So I want to start off by doing that and then check that number printing still works. So I'm still going to have something to print numbers, either print hex or print int. We can just use this one for now, really. So that was the previous invocation to print an, in an integer. Let's just, let's just say we're going to print a number, which could be maybe hopefully any numeric type. But I'll change the function signature here. So instead of just taking an int32, let's say we take in as big of a number as we can on this platform for x86, for x86-64 specifically. That'd be uint64, uint n. I'm also going to take in the base that we want to use. So base 10 would be decimal, base 16 would be hexadecimal, base 2 would be binary, <laughs> base 8 would be octal. I'm sure there's ternary folks out there. You know who you are. Maybe you can do that. But we'll be able to support it. Everything up until basically the largest digit we have here, which I'm just going to say base 16 hexadecimal. So I'll expand that out to F. So this should be 16 digits. Vim tells me 16 in the bottom corner. So what else am I going to do? Let's say we have signed, although signed is a keyword in C, like a signed character versus unsigned. Those are keywords, so I'm not going to call it signed, but let's say we have a Boolean. And I can try to transfer into doing UE, UEFI defined Booleans. I don't know, I like kind of the C way of defining them, but we can try it out. So if we have a Boolean, signed is a keyword, let's say is signed or signed num. I guess signed num would look bad because we already have a number as an input parm. Let's say is signed. So we'll say if we want to print a negative number, we should pass in if it's signed. If it's not, we're going to print it as a positive number, which might not be what you want, but that's kind of your fault for calling the function with the incorrect parameters, right? So let's assume that's okay. <laughs> the number buffer I'm going to expand to 20 because I think that's what I did down here. Hopefully enough for uint in max. Let's say uint 64 technically, uh, plus sign character. Uh, maybe we need a little bit more than that. I don't know. If it's not, we can expand it, but we'll see. Plus, we need a null on the end. Let's make it 24. It's probably less than 24. I'll just make it 24. All right, so what are we doing with this? We'll have a Boolean that's negative that says if the number is less than zero, let's get rid of that. If it's signed, we'll check if it's negative. If it's not, I'm not going to worry about it. So let's say if we want to print a sign number, just because I can do this first, uh, we want to check if it's negative and do some other stuff with it. So we'll know if it's negative if the signed representation is going to be below zero. So as a uint n, everything's going to be expanded or converted to uint n on input to this. So we can't really say if that's a negative, it would always be true that it's positive. We can't mess with it that way. But we can say if we have is signed and maybe we have a nested if that we can refactor in a, in a minute. So we'll say we have our number, that's a uint n. If we make it an int n, so sort of cast it to a signed version of itself. It won't really change anything. However, we can check if that casted version is going to be negative. So if we pass in, if we pass in something smaller, even this would still work. Like if we passed in an int 32 min, like a negative 2 billion something, whatever that is. And then we cast it to a uint n, it wouldn't be negative anymore. But if we cast it back to an int, it would, at least for the purpose of this check, <laughs> be converted back to a negative or a signed integer in this case. Uh, which that didn't really make much sense, much sense, but if we check if the sign version is negative, we know we passed in a negative number if we want to print out a negative number here. So that's that's all I'm trying to get at. But if that's the case, then we can say number equals a negative version of itself. And by default, this will work, although I like sort of casting it as an int just to signify when we're taking the signed version, the negative signed version. Because if you just take the uint n casted to an int n, it's not going to print the right number. If you pass in an int min, it'll pass in like the, the complement to that. 
And then if you make that negative, it, it's just not going to work out. But if you do this, it's kind of like, okay, two's complement says we're going to subtract it all from all ones. We're going to take the sort of difference in the number from that maximum. And then I'm going to kind of flip it and, and turn all the sine bits to zeros. And then we'll get end up getting the right complement. So this will end up being sort of the absolute value of the true negative value of the number. So it's kind of confusing. I'm not doing a good job here, but we want to get the absolute value to print, even if we're printing a negative number. Right, and according to this do while loop down here. So we also, we're taking in a base, so we don't have to do this. We'll know it's negative because we can say negative is true here. Or if we say it's a, I guess we want to add the Boolean. If we use a UE5 Boolean, which I might switch to doing the C Booleans, but uh, UE5 Boolean, we can do true or false. We don't have those defined. I'll put that in EFI.h. I don't like doing it, but uh, we have the Booleans right here, right? Zero, false, one, true. So we'll just define false as zero and true as one, just to go along with the data types in the spec, right? So that'll be okay. I'll do that. So that means this will be initialized to zero. If we do true, we can do true like that. We don't get the nice syntax highlighting though, but that's okay. I'll just say of correct uh, signed value to get digits to print. All right, so we have that worked out. We don't need to do this little check here. We can still do this do while loop, but let's say instead of number mod 10, we'll do number mod base that was passed in. So we can do anywhere from like zero to 16. And this will be divide equal by base. Of course, if they, if they send in something that's beyond that point, we don't really want to support that. We can do that as a check. We don't need to, but I guess for better error handling, we could. So we'll say if base is greater than the length of this string, which would probably be 16. But right now we'll just say if base is greater than 16, we'll return false, right? We'll say, eh, that's not allowed. Base not allowed or invalid. And I should probably print like, you know, an error to the screen if we want to do that, which would go along with error printing and stuff in the future. Eh, print error on, we'll say standard error. But all right, I don't like this being nested either. We don't have to do that. So let's say if signed and the number, then we'll do that. I just think that looks better. We'll get this as normal. If it's negative, that will be true from that. Then again, we're gonna add the negative sign and we'll terminate with this. So this should still work. Of course, it's just for integers, not for hex or other things. So let's add in some stuff for that. So I'm going to switch on the base here, do some special printing. Default, I guess, we will print nothing, or we'll assume it's an integer. Right now, I guess I'll do nothing unless I say it's invalid. Maybe an invalid base here we aren't currently handling, but I just won't do anything. Let's say, well, I'll go in ascending order. We'll have case two. Two will be binary. I'll do the ones I know of that are somewhat common still, which is binary, octal, decimal, and hexadecimal. Y, 2, P, there we go. 10 will be the regular decimals we all know and love, and 16 will be hexadecimal. And the only thing I'm going to do here is just print, you know, the initial little symbol, like the 0B, 0X sort of thing to signify what kind of base we're working with here. And regular printf has, I guess, the pound sign, the octothorpe for that, that you can use as a as a flag in the, I don't know the right term for it, it's been a while, the printf specifier, the little percent sign. So if you do percent hash x, it'll print the zero x before the number. Right now, I'm not doing that. I'm just saying by default, we're going to print this out. But I guess if you're doing long numbers and it was built into two or more chunks or parts, then you might want to specify the, you might want to specify the pound sign on one of those, right? So you only have the beginning one have the zero X and not every single part, but that's neither here nor there. We can do this easy enough by saying, okay, the next thing in the buffer, as we increment the index, will be a char 16 literal of what? So this is going to be put within the buffer backwards. That's why we're swapping the stuff here. So just digits, we'll say reverse, reverse buffer before printing. Um, so if we put in something like, you know, 0B110, 
one zero one zero whatever whatever number that is which is eight four and one so that's 13 so that'd be like d so might need another thing there but anyway what is that d4 checkmate but if we have this and it's like you know actually this whatever the number we send in is not going to be this right and the computer it doesn't care it'll see it's an int or something but we're going to print and get the digits out and put them in a buffer sort of backwards so if the number is like one two three four and the buffer it's going to start with four three two one it's kind of most significant if you want to think of it that way so we got to print it backwards right which is why we swap it down here but if we add in something on the start like zero x if it's hex like all f's or something we need to add that in backwards as well so how do I do that? Well, you add just the, the thing you're going to add as the signifier, say in this case an X, and then the zero, right? Those are just the next elements in the buffer. That was a bad long-winded explanation for that. For binary, we'll do zero B, since we're doing mod, mod by the base here and dividing equal. It'll only take number mod two for the last digit, so it'll be zero or one by default, and then it'll chop that off by dividing by two anyway. Chop off the one or the zero in that case, implicitly. So, okay, octal, we'll say O, even though in C it's just anything that begins with a zero, which is, I think, really dumb that it's still that way, I think, in the spec. But, oh well, decimal, we're not going to do anything. But we will say only for decimal, I'm not going to print, like, sign negative values for binary or octal or hex, but for decimal we can, because that's the normal numbers you might want to print, negative 100 or something. So if we're signed here... I can add another case, actually. We'll say if base is 10, because that's the only one right now that I'm going to say is going to be able to print negatives. So if you don't do like percent %d, that's on you for expecting weird values. <laughs> Let's say it's, it's a decimal number, and it's signed. So only use and print negative numbers if decimal and uh, signed true, I guess. That's, that's fine. So we'll do that. Okay, so here we can check if negative, then we'll add the negative sign here by saying the next element in the buffer is going to be the minus sign, right? We'll do that. That's all. That's all I'm going to do there. The other ones, yeah, I'll add in the initial 0x or o or b, and that'll be okay. Uh, we don't have to do this because we're only doing it if it's signed, but that's what I'm doing only for decimal numbers there. Default, I'll say, maybe invalid base, but we'll go with it. <laughs> so no special processing. Feeling a little spicy tonight. All right, then we'll null terminate the string, move the index back, swap as normal, and output the string, and that should be okay. We'll have it only be zero or one values there. So print hex we should not need, because we have print number now. I'm just going to... I'll leave that there for now, but we'll try it with the new stuff, which I just called, I just called print, print int. Let's call it print number, just a generic thing. Print a number. We'll say two standard out. And I might just copy it and be very lazy, copy it for standard error if I want to do an eprintf, right, sort of thing, an eprint num, which will just, instead of C out, use the, the standard error instead, but. Okay, don't need print hex. What are we doing? D. So if we're printing a signed number, instead of int32, well, we're getting an int32, we could do LD or LLD, stuff like that. Or I could say we're just getting the max that we're putting forth here. But if we even if we just do this for an int32, instead of print int, we can do for the print number now, we want to pass in the number, which will be, it'll be sort of widened to a uint n by the function um, prototype for that now, signature. Function signature, we have a base. The base I want to do is 10 for decimal. And is it signed? We'll say it is going to be signed because it might be a negative number we want to print. For hexadecimal, I'm not going to do that. We want to print out the number, print out the hexadecimal base, which is 16, and we'll say we're not going to sign it. Of course, this doesn't matter if we send true for it. We don't need to have an error on that because it's only going to do negative processing or check if it's signed, really, if the base is 10. So that's fine. Uh, but that should work for printing still these things. And then things that aren't numbers, we don't care. So does that work? Do I have compiler errors? I don't, which is a magical thing that never happens. Set text mode. 
And these numbers still print correctly. <laughs> Who would have thought? We got the hex number for attribute. That's right. Because it is blue. No. Yeah. It's blue for background, yellow foreground. Um, and then the numbers below, they still print. Go to four, go back, up, down, escape exits. Okay. So numbers print. That's nice. One singular thing for that. Get rid of print hex. Get it out of here. We don't need it no more. Cut down on stuff a little bit, except I'm probably going to go and just copy it right back again because, oh yes, I'm not passing any variable for the console output to print to. So I could do that and make like a macro thing to cover it up. But I'm a lazy person, as I just said, and I don't want to think about that right now. So <laughs> let's say we just have two versions, which is not great, and I'll just prefix them with E for error. And this, instead of printing to standard out, will print to wherever I called my error stuff, right? Which is a global up here. And I don't have it, actually. I thought I had it. I have C error right here. Okay, but I never filled it out. That's my bad. So let's say that's going to be system table and whatever the thing is. I think it's, it's standard error. Yeah. So we'll fill that out as an initial thing, and then we'll use that in place of C out if I want to print for standard error and hope that it works for error printing. So I just think that's a little better. Probably better to have stuff print that way. Let's e print, e print number instead. And I'm just going to copy printf as well. This stuff I don't want to have in this main file anyway. I'm just giving myself more fodder to do that faster. So we'll say to standard error. And I'll call it e printf, right? And the only difference, <laughs> so it's very bad. The only difference is in all of this, we'll just do that. We'll substitute C out for C error everywhere. All right. And that should hopefully work without anything else other than substitution everywhere that string occurred. Okay. We still have the regular printf anyway. So we'll just say to standard out. All right, and hope that that works. So how do we test that? Well, let's see if we have an error, like we pressed enter on an invalid choice or something. Because I did want to change this to do that. So I could change it and say eprintf, and then I won't have to change anything else. Assuming standard error is set up correctly on my system, it might or might not be. Do I have any other error text? I do here. I just want just a generic error text. Um, I guess ePrint number, I could do that. Which I'm already printing stuff out, so... <laughs> C error output string, let's say invalid base. Invalid base specified. All your base are not belong to us, we don't handle that one. Let's say percent... Uh, well, I'm not doing that, am I? <laughs> Let's copy it out there, and we want to get whatever the base is, I guess, that they passed in, and print that out. But right now, no, we'll just say we'll just say it's it's invalid, and we'll return false. That's that's fine. Down here, I guess I'll do that as well since it's an error. That's fine, whatever. Where else do I have errors? Let's do eprintf for those, just in case. If it's a bad text mode, we can get that and check that that works. Press any key to try again. That might be better on standard out, though. We can try it on eprintf. I don't think I have any other mentions of error. No. Okay. Any mistakes here? Oh, still no mistakes. On a hot streak tonight. So we do one. One's invalid. And it does not print the rest of the text. So I think I was lying, right? I was lying. So that's good. Line as in, it does not work. <laughs> Probably because, no, it should be able to print a string there. So I have anything, yeah, mode number is invalid. Why was that not printing, huh? Interesting. Because it did print out the status. He saw that. It did not print out the surrounding text, which is very interesting to me. I would wonder why that didn't work. It should just print it out the error here. 
or invalid format specifier, or just the character, which we had there. Very interesting. Okay, I'll have to debug that later, because I don't want to mess with it right now. <laughs> Turns out the status, but nothing else. That's just very interesting. Hmm. It could be that it's not set up correctly either, because I am resetting C out. Maybe I need to reset C error as well. So we'll just have, let's just reset everything. Reset console inputs and output. Let's do CN as well, which I don't even know if it has that available. It probably does. So it would be inputs protocol instead of outputs. If I input reset, we do have that. And it's just called reset, taking in this and if null, that's fine. For false, that's that's fine. Although technically they're booleans, right? So it'd be the UEFI boolean version. So that is what that would be. Probably didn't change anything. Nope, didn't change anything. Okay, well, I'll have to debug that later. And that's okay. So that's only if we're printing errors. It just sucks that that doesn't work. Maybe the error doesn't work as well. It should work the exact same way. Or it's being, you know, optimized away. Or some such. Oh, you know what it is? I'm calling print number, but I'm not calling e print number. Ah, you see, there's the issue. It's e print f. Why did I make these different interfaces if I didn't even bother to use them correctly? You know what I mean? Like, what am I doing? Default invalid specifier else. Just print the character c e e e r r. Like that should work, but that was not printing the characters regardless, which is interesting. So maybe it just, maybe there is no error output on emulation or on my setup. There could not be. I might have to connect something differently for it. I've never tried this before, so that would make sense. Sometimes you have to actually connect controllers and make sure drivers and everything are set up. Yeah, because if I do one now, nothing happens, right? So it's probably the case that something's iffy with my my thing there, uh, but that's okay. So what I can do in place of that to make sure stuff still works is just uh, fudge it a little bit. <laughs> Research why this does not work in emulation, nothing prints, or it could be that standard output has like the output device and standard error can't share it or something, or it's not set up to share it or use the same thing. But we can fudge it and say, okay, we'll just equal sit out or see out. And that's fine. Right, we can just fudge the thing. So we can say, okay, we'll set, oh, it, you know, all this stuff still happens, all right. Because that's how it was before. Uh, anyway, what do I actually want to do this video? <laughs> Instead of wasting time for 20 something minutes, not, not printing error stuff. Uh, I want to actually get the GOP and stop, uh, you know, blue balling myself and, and the audience here. So let's do that. Pardon my French. How do we set up the GOP? I want to do something similarly to how we set up the text mode, which I think is just, yeah, set text mode. I did make a set graphics mode that has a stub with nothing, nothing in it right now. So I might not do all of this stuff, but I'll just copy in the text mode stuff right now, just to make sure that we can actually call this function and that it works, right? Let's do that, because there's, there's a couple different things we have to do to get a graphics mode versus a text mode, since text modes are built in and supported by default, and graphics modes are not. Technically, the GOP isn't directly available from, um, from boot or runtime services, for example. So this is going to do the same thing as setting the text mode. The only reason I'm setting this up is so that I can check that getting a key from the main menu actually calls the right function, <laughs> which I should have set up here. Yeah, the menu functions, right? So let's say menu text on screen functions to call for each menu option. Not that I need to label these things, but we can make sure that it calls set graphics mode here right quick. So we go down 
go down to set graphics mode, it also goes to set text mode, right? We go to set text mode, it does the same thing. You don't want two things to do the same thing, but that is a test. Okay. So I want to do similarly, I want to do things similarly to setting a text mode where we have an overall loop and I'm, I'll make it more of a menu, not just entering in a number. I'll make it kind of like the main menu below, which makes me think, okay, I need to abstract to have a sort of make menu function, but I don't want to think about that right now. Let's say graphics mode information. Ooh, it's different. We won't have columns and rows. We, I think we do have a query. Yeah, we will have a query mode function to get info. So I don't know what info I want to put on the screen. We'll put in some things here. Let's say GOP mode. I don't know, information. And we'll get that from calling query mode or other stuff here. So let's say to do, and we'll print out the info. Um, I think it does have a max mode. It does have a current mode. It doesn't have an attribute or this other stuff. Let's say we have, I don't know, frame buffer. We'll have the frame buffer. So let's say frame buffer address. I'll put it in hex because usually that reads better. We could probably put more stuff on one line as well, but we'll just have a line for each one. We'll say size. Size could be just a, a variable here. We could add in U as well. We could try adding in a U to the printing a number thing. So let's do that. Print F, can I search for you? Not E print F, but the regular. We'll do that. We'll add another thing here. I don't mean to be too scatterbrained, sorry. I did have enough coffee today, but it's also after a long day. <laughs> so it might be going a bit uh, a bit jumbled here in the brain and thusly on the video, but that's all right. So let's have percent %u, we'll have number u in 10. It might be in 10 for this. In 32 is what I'm doing for this. Let's say it won't be hex. Let's say u in 32. And maybe we'll add in like length specifiers later. Let's say right now we'll do u in 32 to go along with the int32. So we'll get a uint int32 number. uint32 number equals that from var args. We'll do base 10 and we'll do not signed. So unsigned, so that's good. Instead of doing signed, we'll just do the same thing. Unsigned for uint. Okay. So if I go back to where I called percent u down here, uh, we'll have to get this info, of course, right? But I'll just lay out. What else do we want to know for this? Probably the X by Y information. So let's say width is going to be D and height, or well, it won't be signed, right? We'll say width and height, or UXU, right? <laughs> Something like that. And we'll fill out this stuff. So we'll probably have something like mode, max mode. We'll have to get some sort of GOP structure for the protocol and find all that stuff out. So we'll be doing that. But let's say we have a structure called GOP that we'll have in the future, which will have a max mode and a current mode and probably other info associated. I don't think it looks exactly like this because there's an info within like a nested structure for information specifically that has this stuff. But anyway, this is enough to get the idea. Uh, we'll say, I don't know, this is not what it's going to be like, but we'll say X resolution or something. Because I don't remember what the actual name is at the moment. GP mode. And I'm going to comment this out as well in a moment anyway. Y resolution, we'll say frame buffer address or FB address. and FB size. All right, so these are not the actual names and I'm gonna comment this out, but we'll do this in a second. So we'll say print info to do, we'll output a string for available. We'll say GOP modes and we'll print that stuff and do all this. So C out mode, we'll say it'll be GOP instead. And we'll query these other modes for the other stuff and, and all that stuff. We won't have columns and rows. We'll print out other things. This will just be the mode number of I, and we'll say whatever the mode is. 
again width and height or whatever we call it x res and y res so right now we'll say test <laughs> mode percent u slash just to have something on the screen slash r slash n we'll do i for that it doesn't need to be uint32 although it might be an n32 so we'll do d all right we'll get numbers from the user we'll do this other stuff i'm gonna gut this probably to make a sort of menu system get input from user and we'll just process it within the loop here so i'm just gonna remove i'm just gonna get this stuff right now i guess we'll take in a key though and we'll have to mess with the cursor positions right now. I'm not going to do that stuff. If it escapes, we'll return that. We'll go back. Choose text and redraw. We'll just comment this stuff out. I'm not doing anything. We need to know how to get the GOP info. So this should print like nothing right now, hopefully. All right. Yeah, and we don't have GOP. That's true. So we'll just do like all of that. <laughs> Get something that compiles and then we'll like fix everything, right? All right. So that compiles. So graphics mode doesn't do anything but prints those lines. Okay. So how do we actually get this stuff get the current mode information? Well, we have to actually get a GOP mode a GOP mode to begin with. Which I might do that before like the screen even starts. Or we could get it before the function is called. I'm not sure. If we open or get a protocol for the GOP, it doesn't matter if you do that repeatedly. I don't think it matters if you call open. Like, there's a function to open a protocol. I don't think it matters if you do that repeatedly. But I'll probably end up calling locate protocol repeatedly and see if we can get an instance that way. And we'll just check. I'll just do that. I'll do that before this loop. So let's say get GOP protocol. We'll have to lay out the definitions in the, the header file anyway. We'll say we'll do this using something like locate protocol, right? Which is a function I'll look at in a minute. So let's lay out some basic, I guess, info for the GOP. Because <laughs> I'm talking nonsense right now. So the GOP in the specification is under console support, which is section 12, chapter 12, and graphics output protocol. So it's meant to replace VGA, maybe VBE to some extent, Visa, graphics output, although it's kind of like Visa in a way. Uh, it comes with a blip buffer, which just represents, you know, it says it uses a standard screen representation that anything else 2D wise does pretty much. I say 2D because they don't mention a Z axis, but you can emulate that on top of it, of course. The blip buffer says, okay, top left is the origin, x, y, 0, 0, bottom left is width minus 1, height minus 1, width could be 1920, height could be 1080, for example, 1080p screen. The number of bytes, the number of pixels in a row is going to be a scan line. Y axis is up and down, x is left to right, you know. You know how a rectangle works, right? So the GOP protocol itself is here. We'll just move back over there. Go to this stuff. This is not connected to the um, the boot services or the runtime services. This is one of many protocols that are outside of that realm, and you need a way to interact and find and get these given abstract device handles and stuff like that. So we'll be doing that through a few select functions, but case in point, a way to find this with other functions such as locate or handle protocol which are available from boot services directly because you need that available to find other things. <laughs> so it's kind of nice that they laid it out like that. But there are ways to find protocols such as the GOP using its GUID specifically. Like that is a, that is a specific way to locate. It. Well, if you call locate protocol, you can say by protocol and give a GUID. So one way of saying, okay, I want to find the GOP is calling a function and saying directly, here's the unique ID for the protocol I want to find, in this case, graphics output protocol. So I can copy this and we can have a bunch of GUIDs somewhere in this header. Maybe by the other defines, I'll put it above here or something. 
So I have GUID defined, don't I? Yeah, I have EFI GUID defined here. So let's say we have stuff down here. Although that goes along with the data types. Uh, I'll put it above the status codes. So let's say EFI GUID values, um, these will be various miscellaneous, not all inclusive. <laughs> It does not contain every GUID, just only ones that are here or that have gotten to so far. So if we define, for example, the graphics output protocol, I don't like how they laid it out here because according to the spec in the appendix A or D or whatever, they lay out the GUID value like this, but their, their macro defines for it are not like this. It is four, two, two, and then eight ones instead of two ones and then a region of six. So instead of doing that, you know, I say down with the man, we're going to do things my way. And we just move over the curly brace here, or you could change this to have node eight and not include these two. And then you could take, you know, directly copy and paste. I'm not going to be doing that because I'm a stubborn person. So just so you know, that's why mine looks slightly different because I laid it out how they did in the spec, even though they don't follow that when they lay out these but anyway it might be able to implicitly convert from compiler magic string replacement but you could get errors if it doesn't line up so uh, because this will be counted as an array of bytes and it won't line up if it's eight bytes shoving into <laughs> these two bytes in this six byte array anyway uh, pedantry is all too pervasive in programming as it is why do i have to make it worse but what we can do is say okay we have a guid for the GOP, we have a variable for that. We can specify that in our code to search for this protocol, but we do have to know what the protocol is if we want to get a version of it back and actually be useful. So I'll get the protocol interface structure. I'll put it down here somewhere above the text output protocol. That's fine. We'll have graphics output protocol, which is in 12.9.2. I could put it, you know, in incrementing order. I might do that later so it lines up better. Because 12.9 coming before 12.4 kind of irks me in the brain a little bit, but that's okay. Let's say, well, I'm on a copy-paste bonanza, so let's just do that. We don't necessarily need it to rename itself unless things are circularly dependent and do that, but we'll see what happens if I get rid of that. Let's say we do these things, which would take a lot longer to type out by hand, especially since I don't use a caps lock key, because why would you use a caps lock key? We don't yell at things. We have lowercase letters in the 21st century, and they didn't realize that when they wrote the specification, but that's okay. Probably because they wrote it before the 21st century, but that's all right. So we have query set, blit, and mode. I will probably be using all of these things, so I'll leave them all defined. But to define some of these things, you need other things defined. So we'll leave that there. So query mode returns info for the current mode, basically that you're asking for. Set mode will set a new mode. So similar to text mode stuff here. Blit or block transfer is an abstracted function you can call to take pixels from one square and put them in another square effectively. It gives you a few ways to do that if you don't want to write to the frame buffer directly, which you should also be able to do. And we have a pointer to some mode data, which we don't know what's in there. So down here, we have a bit mask. We'll copy that. Well, I don't have to do control C. I can just do that, can't I? So I don't need to put this separately anyway, but I'll just put a little thing there. Copy that. It did not do. Oh, it did type def struct right there. Put that there. All right, so we get four bytes in which they'll have bits, and the bits will be set according to the location of those colors in our pixel information, our pixel format. So if we have a red mask, if we have like RGBA, and they're all eights, so let's say quad eight RGBA, you know, we'll have four bytes for red, followed by four bytes for green, followed by, not four bytes, sorry, eight bits or one byte for red, one byte for green, one byte for blue, one for A. So we have, well, these are four bits each, but. 
sometimes it's easier in hex. Probably not if I do it like this. But if we have like red, green, blue, and then alpha, we'll just have all the Fs. And sometimes it's alpha RGB, sometimes it's BGR. It depends on your hardware. That's why they give you a sort of generic structure you can query for it. Um, but if we have stuff like this, you know, the top, oh, <laughs> the top eight bits, right, for red are all going to be one. So this mask should have, I don't know why it's four bytes, though. That seems like really excessive. I guess we have really high bit color. But if a bit is one, it just means that that bit is set within the mask for this whole thing. But I guess it's four bytes because you can and with it for a four byte pixel, right? So if you have a pixel and the pixel is made up of these things for RGB8, then this mask should look like a four byte value. It should be um, FF and all zeros, right? So you can and with that mask to get the bits in the pixel that correspond to the red component. And you'd have another four bytes in this example, for green, which would just be the E's, and the blues would be D's, right? And the A's would be F's. So you can and with this mask later, you can have like a um, UN32 pixel, whatever. And if you want to get the red component, you'd, you know, bitwise and that with the red mask, wherever this is within some other struct. But that's, that's what the masking is for. You could sort of and and or and stuff to determine where it's at within a pixel, according to its format which I should get here. We have an enum here. So, okay. So we have red, green, blue reserved, so RGBA. We have blue, green, red reserved, BGRA, effectively. If reserved doesn't count for alpha. Eight bits, we have a bit mask. We have block transfer only or format max, which are I don't know, but I like that it has two standard 4-byte versions here. Byte 3 is reserved. This is the definition for the frame buffer. The byte values represent color intensity, which is 0 to 255. That's normal, because they're 1-byte values. And then we have BG, BGRA, or BGR reserved, which will be reversed. Pixel bit mask. The definition is defined by the bit mask. Okay. So if it's not one of these, then we can take a specialized bit mask and look at it. Maybe it's 565 <laughs> color for some reason fit into a 32-bit value, right? It could be 15-bit color fit into a 32-bit value. You'd find out by the masks. That's okay. In that case, the, the B and R are maybe 5 bits, and the green would be 6. And they would show that in the masks. Blit only, it does not support a frame buffer, but you can use it as a buffer or a, a abstract rectangle that you can read and write from through block transfer. Format mask, max rather. Valid enum values are less than this value. Oh, okay. So that's a common thing in C that you would do. This is like a count. So you could say if this, if, if a value for format is greater than um, three, <laughs> if it equals the max, which is four, than or above, then it would be an invalid format, right? So this is just an easy way of getting a count of however many enum values you have for this given enum, which you, you probably all know that, but I have to say that to myself to understand why they, they do that. Uh, you'll see that in C a fair few amount of times. It's a good boundary condition. Okay, what do we have? Output mode information, which is not the mode structure, <laughs> but it is part of the mode structure, I believe. But we'll just copy, copy like everything down here. Let me copy this word, actually. Put that there. Uh, that did not do what I wanted. Do that. This goes down. Then we do that. Then we do that. Okay. What do we have here? We have output mode information. That actually copies from where you're at in the cursor to the end of the word. Interesting. Okay. So this is whatever it says. It just doesn't provide a description. Just goes into it. The version of this data structure, zero. It should be zero. Okay, backwards compatibility through versioning. 
So here we go. We have horizontal and vertical resolution. Where is this uh, provided within output info? Is it provided somewhere? Okay, it's provided within the output protocol mode structure. Okay. Okay, if you're not fully confused yet, <laughs> within our graphics output protocol, this structure, we have a mode, right? Graphics output protocol mode, which they define after defining what it contains for, I guess, good reason. So the graphics output protocol mode, one of its fields, we have a mode structure, dereference to get this structure, right? One of the fields in this nested structure is the information for the mode which is not confusing at all. <laughs> and the information for that mode, that structure is this that I just copied. So you have to go like GOP, dereference to mode, dereference to info, and then dereference that and you'll get this stuff. So it's like three layers deep. But anyway, it comes with the version of the mode, horizontal and vertical resolution, which will be, you know, 1920 by 1080, 3840 by 2160, 640 by 480, if you're a, a true purist at heart. We'll have a pixel format, which is going to be this enum value tell you how the pixels are laid out. We'll have information for those pixels, I'm assuming. And we'll have the number in a scan line, which should roughly, well, should probably always correspond to. If it's one of these 8-bit per color values, it should be 4 times however many uh, pixels are in the horizontal resolution, right? So 1920 times 4 should be the number of well, this is pixels per scan line. Okay, so it might be, well, there could be like V-blank and other things. Let's assume it's like some multiple of the horizontal resolution, though. I'd assume it normally would be, but I don't know. I haven't programmed enough graphics stuff to tell you. Uh, finds physical format. Blit only implies a frame buffer is not available, so that would suck. Or it's headless or something. Could be used for a double buffer for another, another uh, the monitor or something, we'll say. Only valid if it's set the bit mass, then you have the masks. The number of pixel elements, ooh, picture element, for video memory line. For performance reasons, scan lines may be padded to an amount of alignment. Okay, that makes sense. So the pixels could be padded to an alignment value that's not directly comparable. Sorry, not directly, I don't know, a multiple of or modulo the horizontal res. They're outside and are not visible. Yeah, it could be for like V-blank or other things. For direct frame buffer access, it is used as a span between pixel lines based on the size of an individual element, pixels per scan line. The offset xy to xy plus 1 has to be size of element times pixels, not times horizontal res. In many cases, they can be the same thing, and they probably will be mostly. Sometimes they might not be. So full, full genericity, which is not a word, full genericness, we probably want to do that. Multiply by the pixels value and not just plain horizontal res, if we're doing graphics calculations or drawing, you know, emojis or something. And then they're getting some examples using these things by doing what? Just getting info, getting the next address, output info dot pixels per scan line. Cool, okay, why are they using int n for pixels? That's interesting. But anyway, then we have the mode I already got the mode, didn't I? No, I got the protocol. <laughs> we have the information for the mode. We actually have to get uh, the mode. All the mode. Put that there. Put that sucker there. The mode itself. The modus operandi minus us operandi. Just the mode. I wish Vim had an easier way. I know I could write a keybind to like align stuff, but that would probably be difficult to get in a general case. I probably need like a plugin to do that. There's probably plenty of Vim plugins to align stuff, but anyway, we have a max mode and mode similar to text modes. Mode info struct. Then we have a mode info struct. <laughs> I'm not funny. Uh, which is another yeah pointer to this thing. We have the frame buffer, so we have frame buffer info directly, which is nice. You don't have to dereference again to get like an address for the frame buffer, but you do have to go deeper to get the actual resolution of your screen and the pixels laid out therein. So you do have to read both anyway, but whatever. Size of info. This mode info could increase in the future, although I guess they haven't in a while. And should it increase in the future, you probably only want to read as much as size of info bytes and, you know, fill this in. 
Um, cause there could be stuff later. Maybe there's like padding values or other, or other crap later. Padding, padding tin bear values. And then, you know, you'll read the size, but the size of info should be at least as big as this structure. So I'm just going to say it's as big as this structure and only read this info and not try to read secret keys outside of memory and be weird. Uh, I can't help it. I'm already weird. Mode number zero to max mode minus one. Okay. Abstraction to be drawn directly to the frame buffer. Then we have the actual functions query mode and such. So that does lay out this as this. So I probably do need to do what I did before. That is true because I need these functions laid out, don't I? Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, so I can do that. That is all right. We'll just do this. I won't do that. Just define it as itself. That's fine. That way you can get circular dependencies and get them to leave you alone. Leave me alone. Just make it work the first time, please. I'm going to rely way too much on copy paste. I can already tell. <laughs> I am spoilt. This needs a this needs a comma beside of it. Thank you, UEFI spec practitioners. What do we do to query mode? We have to give it, of course, the this struct. We give it the mode number, the size of info, and the info. So a pointer to the info that will be returned. So a buffer of this size. Or we can say we have a struct, and then we give the size of that struct. That'll work as well. But just keep in mind, it's a pointer to a pointer, not an array, but just we're giving a pointer that it'll fill out, which will give the address to the mode info of this size. So it'll tell you how big it is too, which is nice. Um, but it would be nice if I could just, you know, use the struct itself and make it a little easier. And I might try and do that. Your size and bytes, point to the Kali, but they have to do that because it could be generic in the future. Some other size that isn't the size of the struct. If it's installed on the handle, the set of modes returned. Is the subset supported? That makes sense. A combination of devices, then the set of modes is supported by the controller. And the all of the video output devices represented by the handle. You should just put and all, get rid of the the there. That's confusing. But I was not an English major. My grammar is as poor as it is. Set mode, sets of video mode. Let's put this as well. Uh, I forget what I did for the other ones. I called it, I called it the name of the function. Okay. I was like, that's a really long name, but then I remembered that I can just copy paste the word. So that works. What is that? 12, nine, two, one. We're going four numbers deep now. That's, that's pretty, it's pretty out there, man. Set mode. Yeah, okay, we'll do after. Graphics output protocol set mode. Now we'll go to the end, do a two. Now I'll grab that. So you have this and a mode number. Pretty, pretty lax by comparison. Just give it the mode number to set. And I could do that better. Blit. Oh, Blit has some more stuff. Blit pixel. Does it use that here? Output blit pixel, it does. Okay, and then blit operation, and then the regular, okay. Well, they give me everything, so that's nice. Is there other stuff I need that's also circularly sort of dependent here? Only the GOP, these both are defined there. Those are UNNs, okay. So that's not too bad. Okay, line this up. They don't need, well, optional is fine because that's going to go to blank, right? Yeah, that's not defined as anything. That's just weird putting it after the comma. I want to do that. I want to put the comma after. That makes more sense to me, I think. So we have the GOP instance. We have a blit buffer, which is an array of output blit pixels 
I should make those things look better, probably, because I put these up here. All right, don't really need comments for all these. It helps me when searching. So it's not very much to ask. I could have a keybind or a macro to do that for me, though, but that's all right. It's probably fast enough. Okay. So an array of four byte values for the pixel that we want to blitz from, is it from or to? The data to transfer to the graphics screen. Okay, then we have an operation. So we can fill up a full video buffer, which you can think of it as the screen or the monitor if that helps, I think it helps. So if you consider a video buffer and a blit buffer, block transfer is two separate rectangles that you're transferring to and from each other. You know, you have, you have data and you can think of it as double buffering as well. You could implement probably double buffering with this, some form of it, but you have a buffer that you write to and a buffer that you write to the screen with, right? Uh, so the screen buffer is separate. The frame buffer, so to speak. When it says video, you can kind of think of it as the frame buffer. So we want to fill up the whole frame buffer with a singular color, you can use video fill. I have source and destinations, width and height, and delta. Delta's weird. I'm not gonna worry about delta. We can send zero so the entire buffer is used, or you can have a sub rectangle where delta is the number of bytes in one row. So I don't wanna think about that. That hurts my brain. So <laughs> no, if you say if you say you have a rectangle that's 10 by 20, you can subset that but only like skinnier, <laughs> so it's kind of weird. I guess you would, you would specify the array of pixels for the total amount of rows, and then the delta would be how many bytes in that corresponds to one row. So you could, that's a weird way to do sub rectangles, but whatever. So video fill with the nice visual errors here. Writes data from the first blit buffer pixel to every pixel of the video display rectangle. Destination plus the width and height that you set. Only one pixel is used, delta is not used. So you don't even need a full rectangle. You can say we have a variable that's one of these structs. You fill it out and you can do a blit video fill operation and do like a clear screen to the background color, like clearing the text mode screen does. You can do that in graphics mode by, you know, just copying one pixel to every pixel on the screen. That's all that's doing. Video to blit buffer copies from the video buffer to the blit buffer. So the source rectangle would be in the video display. The blit buffer is the destination. This is like reading from video memory, some something. Uh, blit buffer to video is writing from the blit buffer to video instead of reading from video to blit buffer. So it's the opposite. This is what you're doing if you're drawing rectangles from a buffer or double buffering. Video to blit buffer is reading video memory uh, or just saving what's on the screen, but it would be slower than writing to it, I think. Video to video is doing copying from video to itself at some different location. Although there's no limitation on overlap, so you could write it to itself if you wanted. Um, but there's different things you can do with that, as well as error handling. And it goes into EDID, but that's all you need for the GOP, and way too many words. I'm not using it yet, of course, but that's what you need for initial struct setup. All right, so how do we actually use that? Well, we need to actually get the GOP before we even use it, and for that I need something else, actually, so. <laughs> I should not have put this on the other screen. Oh, but okay, so what do we do for that? We need to define some more stuff. In the boot services here, go to protocol handler. Yeah, protocol handler. And these are available just from the boot services struct that's passed in from the system table, from the, the entry point in your EFI application. We have a few things for handling things and opening and closing things as far as protocols are concerned. Handle protocol apparently was an old way of doing this, and they want you to use open protocol, but I'm going to try to get away with locate for sort of easy way to start getting stuff, because it's it's very small. So this returns the first protocol instance that matches the given one. So if we have a GUID, like for the GOP, and we pass that in, we should be able to return the GOP instance for our screen or whatever, which the protocol is a struct, if you can think of it as that. So we instantiate a variable for a GOP struct, we pass it in and get it back, right? Uh, pass in that we want the GOP and hopefully get one back, rather. 
registration key, we can pass null. Don't have to worry about that for our stuff. And a pointer should match the first interface that matches it. So we're not gonna open or close it. We should return it and be able to do uh, interrogate or query the GOP from this. If none are found, interface is null. And we might get invalid parameter errors. We might get not found. But I'm going to use locate protocol. So I need to put that back actually. So if I dot H, let's put that below graphics output. It's at 7316. I'll clean this stuff up later anyway. I can put it above simple text output, that's fine. We'll say locate protocol. So this is a way of finding a protocol by GUID, and the GOP needs that because it's not directly available from the system table that's passed into your entry point. So you have to be able to find it. And something that is available from the system table and the entry point is boot services and locating a protocol through there. So that's why I'm doing this. Uh, which I probably already mentioned, but I felt like I should say it again. <laughs> that makes more sense if you repeat yourself right. That's what they taught you in school. Repeat yourself like three times and your students remember something like that. So we have this stuff, so I'm just going to copy that to put on this thing over here because we want to call that for GOP. And this I'll move back out. Okay. So we want to get the GOP protocol first to be able to use it and query it. So I'm going to say we have a GUID variable for GOP, say GUID. And we do have that. that um, that GUID value we have here, graphics output protocol GUID. So I can copy that word and put that there. And that should work to get that into there. We can make it a constant or leave it here because we'll have to take an address of that for this. If we want to locate protocol, we'll say via locate protocol. I think I need that defined as well, actually in my boot services, so. Yeah, because I didn't define it, so that wouldn't have worked anyway. <laughs> so let's uh, let's do that. Did I not put it down here? Oh, it's probably under, it's under library instead. They gotta be different, because of course they do. So this will be EFI, is it just locate? Yeah, EFI locate protocol, locate protocol. Uh, okay, so that's there. It's up there. We should be able to call it. So let's do that. We'll call BS. Call BS on that. Locate protocol given an address to our GUID. So that's the protocol we want to find. The graphics output protocol. Registration, we can pass null. And we need a pointer, a double star void to an interface. And the interface would be our graphics output protocol. It'll be a structure, right? The interface is a structure. So we just get that protocol structure. I'll call it GOP. I don't know if I can instantiate this without, I forgot. I didn't set up memset yet, so I think this will error, but we'll try it out. And we want to send that as um, avoid double star pointer, given the address of that GOP. So this looks weird, but this is saying, if we just take the GOP itself, I mean, it's not really a pointer, it's a struct, so that's kind of weird. If we take the address of that, since this function will fill in that address with the actual interface that's found, interface would be a struct, so it'll fill it out with the actual struct information, hopefully. We have to give it that by saying it's converting it to a void pointer, so it's some generic address, and then it's saying we need the address to that. Because in, in the firmware, it's gonna say like, okay, we have a pointer to GOP, so in actuality, it's going to dereference that and set it to, you know, the actual data for that. So that's why we have to kind of do a double star. It's converting, if we just take an address of the struct, it's converting an EFI graphics output protocol pointer as the type, converting that to a void pointer, and then taking the address of that by making it a double pointer so that they can dereference it later for the actual stuff. That's why it kind of looks like that. It's a little odd, 
but you see that in C sometimes, <laughs> especially with embedded and stuff like this, as we convert addresses to and fro. Uh, so hopefully that works. So we have a bunch of errors. Unknown type name, graphics output mode information. That's not good. Was that at 95? It doesn't know what that is because it's probably after it, and that is why. So, okay. Well, we can put this after that, except it has to show up before the mode. So I can put this. This needs to be after the pixel format in the bit mask. Let's just copy all those three things. I'm going to cut that out and put it above the mode info struct because it has to be before the mode info struct in order for that definition to work. Okay. <laughs> Unknown type name graphics output protocol mode. And now we have to move some other stuff around because why? They can't define things not circularly dependently. I don't know. Um... Okay, I can define that after the mode. Then it doesn't know physical address, that's fair, and conflicting types have struct anonymous because I forgot. Uh, is it struct anonymous for the protocol? Yes. Yeah, I forgot to define the struct as itself again. All right. <laughs> so like for the simple text input and output protocols, I did this once before. I defined it as itself, right? So that functions defined for it would work before the struct, the protocol is defined. But when I define the protocol, you have to name it the same name if you do that. So it takes the actual definition and renames it correctly. So I just forgot to do that here. Uh, yeah, just get the full name so I can find it. All right. Uh, and I put it down here. All right, get that green off my screen. So I just named it here with the same name as the struct. And that should fix at least that error, not the other one. Okay, unused. Physical address is not used. That may or may not be in data types. I don't think it was in data types, but I'll look again. That was driver model. No, calling conventions, data types. Uh, we don't have physical address here. So that's good. It is defined, I think, as u and n, but I don't remember where it defines that. Uh, which is a GOP. I can search for it. The HY physical address. Uh, it'll take a while to search because it's a giant document. There we go. So it found it in capsule update. Is that defined anywhere here? That is a union. Mm. Let's go to the top of the spec and search. Okay. Kate pages. Is it under here? Memory type. Okay. EFI memory type. EFI physical address. Type def uint64. That is nice. So I'm going to put that near the other data types, like down here under the TPL, under the TPS report. There's also virtual address, I believe, because they have physical address. They should have virtual, which I think is the same type, but I can get that now. I think, yeah, it's also UN64 under memory attributes, memory descriptors. It defines that. Under memory descriptors, it has that. It's also UN64. So we'll just define both of those so they're there for later. So now let's control Z for once and do make. Okay, so nothing happens. Is that graphics mode? We might have found the GOP in there. I don't know. We'd have to check if locate protocol returned correctly, uh, which we can do. Let's say that's zero to start off with. We'll say status equals this if We'll just say, if we have an error here, we're doing the Go programming error handling way. And we'll say, could not locate GOP. And that's not good. That's a bad thing. 
and we'll return after that. Say error percent %x, could not locate. GOP will give it the status that caused that. And we'll put that on its own line, okay. And then we'll return. We'll return status there, okay. If we get past that, then we know we're good. But we can check that right quick. So this should be zero, but I'll just check that it's working here because it wouldn't be an error. It might be a warning. I don't know. Let's just check we got something here. Under set graphics mode, it says status zero. Okay, so we got there all right. It did not clear the screen yet. We probably want to clear the screen before printing stuff. Well, that's why we do it right here. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so get the current mode info. Let's print some of that out. And that is from query mode, but that query mode is from the graphics output protocol itself. If I do graphics output protocol. Where are you at? All the way down here? Oh yeah, right there. Yeah, so GOP has those, okay. So that would be from our, our structure here, that GOP struct. So we'll dereference that because it's a function pointer. We'll call query mode and we'll get wherever that was at, which is here. We need to pass it this. We need, uh, this would be an address to itself, I guess, because it's not a pointer. We need the mode number. Do I have the mode number? <laughs> I have the mode. And the mode has the mode. Of course, we give it the mode mode. Classic. Just a classic, that mode mode. Go back in the jump list. We have the size of info. That should be the size of... Well, we need a pointer for that, don't we? We need a thing for that. So, you went in. So, you went in. Mode size. So, that will be size of the mode that we're getting, which is mode information. So, it would be that... We can give a, a type to size of. If I graphics mode information, it should return that within info, but we do need a pointer to fill that out. So actually we can do that here. And we can just do it once outside the loop so it's not constantly instantiated or what have you. So mode info, let's do that. And we'll put it up with the other variables. Old C style, put it up there. Trying to think, do I need a struct for the mode itself? Because we just dereference this to get the mode. It should already be there. Do I need a separate one? I probably do, because we need to query it to get that info. So, okay. So this will be size of mode info. Because um, we don't have to do that. Size of mode info would be you and in. We actually do need that, don't we? Mode info size, because they made it a pointer. <laughs> this will be size of mode info. So actually I'll put that there. So what do we do with that size of mode info? We need a pointer to that variable as well. Mode info size. And then we need, is the mode number u in 32? Mode number you went 32. Because before it was like int 32 and you went in. Mode is you went 32. Okay. Okay, and then we need a struct for that info, which is going to be the mode info here. And again, we need that cool void double star address to that. And then that handles query mode. And we can check the status here. Do this stuff. Say so could not query GOP mode percent U. And this will be 
we'll have status and we'll have what would percent you be GOP mode mode. Else we'll go on. So let's say right now we'll do that just to see if we error or not for whatever mode we currently have. Uh, did you mean graphics output mode information? You know I did. You already know I meant that. Why didn't you make that change for me? Graphics output mode information. That argument type have a struct. Uh, true. It's a struct, not a pointer. We can use a dot for that. That's nice. But the mode, the mode within that struct is a pointer, I believe. I think we do have to do that. Do we need to avoid double pointer? Invalid argument. Incompatible pointer type. Expected that, but is void double pointer. Oh, is it? Is it just an address to that? Now we do need mode information double pointer. Ooh. Okay. So mode info is a regular struct. So address address. <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. Maybe it's how that works. I don't think that's how it works. The address of the address, that's not going to work. We need a pointer to that address. So maybe it would be better if this was a pointer because it'll fill it out. I think probably. In which case I have to change this. Because that would be a struct. We can make it a pointer and it can be null. That's fine. Okay, so if mode info, mode info size is still, that's fine. Then we just have to do the address of that because it's going to be a pointer. Yeah, that makes more sense. That's a little more ergonomic here. And this can be a dot. Okay, still not using current mode. That's fine. Uh, we did not get any errors. That's a good sign because I, I don't know what we did get, of course, but that, that's okay. That's why I'm going to print stuff out, but we didn't get any errors. Or it would have printed that. Okay, so let's do this. Let's print out current mode, which would be, well, we have the max. Max mode, we'll have the current mode, which would be dots. We'll have, this is not X resolution, it's something else. <laughs> Horizontal and vertical, I think. Except it's not through mode, it's through the info inside of that mode. Graphics output mode information. Which we're given, it should be available from mode, but it's also from a separate variable here. So we should be able to query that, query that actually, get the info from there. So if I take my mode info pointer, which should be filled out from query mode here, which let me, just make that show up on both uh, halves of the screen better here. So we can take that mode info, dereference that through whatever I called it. I don't remember where it was at. Here we go. Horizontal and vertical resolution. So those are UNT32, so we'll do that. Vertical resolution, that's what the width by height is. Frame buffer address will be from not the output mode information, but from somewhere else. That'll be directly from the mode. So this will be frame buffer base. So that's the initial base you can offset from to reference the pixels. And we'll have frame buffer size. We can also get the pixel info if we need that. But we can see what this info is right now. I guess we could see what the pixel info is. Which would be output mode information. Yes. Pixels per scan line. Uh, yeah, let me do that. Let's say we have pixel format. I don't know what number that would be. I'll just do an X right now. Is that an enum? 
That's an enum. Okay, so let's do, well, an x would be 0, 1, 2, 3 anyway. Let's do u for that. Well, d, because enums are signed ints still on C17. I'll have information in scan lines as well. Might as well. So format. Information is a bit mask, which is a struct. So that is four things there. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that. We probably won't need that. Only if that's a weird format for only blit. Pixels per scan line we probably will need, though. Pixels per scan line, that'll be unsigned. Okay. Frame buffer base and size. Pixel format would be mode info. And pixels per scan line. Okay. Then we'll have available modes after that stuff. Let's see what this looks like. It'll be waiting for a key, I guess, and not do anything. We'll see what happens. Why would I expect anything to actually work? You know, that's... <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, of course. Hmm, interesting. I mean, I could be going down here and going down and getting other stuff. It does print C out outstream. That is true, which I could replace with printf. Query the mode, get the mode. It does get that far, right? Graphics mode info. Okay. It does at least get that far. Where's that current? Let's just let's just uh get that out of the out of the way. But it doesn't. It doesn't print the info. It does not. It just prints graphics mode information. That's interesting. This is the only spot that I have that. Interesting. I'm assuming it did not error. It didn't print this stuff or return. We did clear the screen and print that. Let's just do a test here. Mm, mm, okay, it doesn't print test. It's query mode not correct. It's probably not. You could print uh, and do nothing. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Interesting. Well, I probably have to debug stuff, don't I? To see where stuff is broken. Hey, it does print right there. <laughs> Okay, so query mode is not working, obviously. We should have the mode in the GOP, assuming we located it. I guess if we locate, maybe we do need to open the protocol. I thought locating would be okay. We'd be able to interrogate the info, but maybe not. Let's see, mode percent %u. And we'll see. That should return stuff within the GOP. I get mode zero. Yeah, I don't think it's returning stuff within the GOP. Okay. Unfortunate. Maybe locate protocol is bad. Uh, I could print what the status is. At is zero. I mean, that's a good sign. It did locate it correctly. Yeah, I might have to do open or something else. I mean, we could be on mode zero as well. If I could see what the max is. Max mode zero. Yeah, okay, so we're not getting the info correctly. Okay, I need to debug this. I'll be back when I figure out that. It's probably something very small. I'm just missing the right variable set up and program invocation, um, invocation. I'll probably try open protocol if this doesn't work, so I'll be back in a second.
Okay, I found the issue. It was something very small, like I said. Instead of using the graphics output protocol, GOP as a variable, so the struct itself, I needed a pointer. Uh-huh. Because when I locate protocol, it fills out that pointer. So instead of filling out the structs that I gave it, it filled out another area. So you pass it a pointer and it says, okay, I'm going to fill this pointer pointing to the location where the info is. So locate protocol takes in a pointer basically for this last thing, or at least it works better if you do. So if I change that GOP to star GOP, just set it to null or whatever, don't have to, but if I do that and then pass in the pointer, um, casted to avoid double pointer, then I have info down here and I changed, you know, GOP dot, I'm going to have to change to dereference because it's a pointer. But just checking the mode in the max mode right quick, uh, we get actual info other than, you know, unused variables. So mode in max mode, I am still in current mode 0, or it's not set, or whatever. But the max mode is 30, which is a valid number. So there, there are probably, probably usually, um, a lot more available GOP modes, depending on your, your screen or whatever you're working with. Emulation-wise is probably more than actual hardware, but maybe not. 30 seems a bit excessive, for example. So I might not print every mode, but we can print, you know, because it'll scroll off the screen in the default text mode. But I might print, you know, some of the modes here. Let's just print the current information. Get that back out. I did, you know, comment a bunch of this stuff out while I was debugging for a minute. So this should work, hopefully, for the info stuff. We'll see, I guess. Probably won't. I think for the info, I can also give a pointer. Let me check. Okay. Yeah, after checking, I think the info, I also give a pointer for this. But the size of is an actual u and n, because we do need a, uh, a pointer to that. But okay. So let's see if the info works after getting the status. And available, we'll do that in the future. Let me just see if this works right. Uh, dereferencing doesn't work, of course, because I have to do that now. Um, and it's a query. Oh, where's that? 459. Uh, oh, for status, yeah. Duh. Dereference it correctly for everything, and that's not valid. Incompatible pointer type. Double pointer takes in itself. Okay, yeah, so we don't need to take the address of that if it if it it itself is a pointer. Can't talk. So now for graphics mode. Hey, we have some stuff here. That's good. So in emulation, my QEMU setup right now, the mode by default, the GOP mode is zero. The width by height, the X by Y resolution is 1280 by 800. Frame buffer size is around four megabytes. Pixel format is 1, pixels per scan line 1280, directly corresponding with the horizontal resolution. The address is at C, whatever. That's default for QEMU. On hardware, it might be different. But we got output. Like, that's good, right? <laughs> that's pretty good. So I do want to fill out the available modes. What does that look like? Is it right? Yeah, I want a, a gap there. So let's put this on its own line, and then we'll go down from there. Probably do want the max mode here, and we'll call query mode for that and fill out some info, I suppose, some basic info about what's available. Then I'll do another while one. Let's do just so I can remove that later. I'll forget otherwise. We need query mode here, so I'll just copy that. Let's assume it's going to work. Probably won't, but we can try to assume it will. So we'll say we have a mode number and a width by height. That's fine. And it won't be that. It'll be mode info, which will give this. So we'll just say mode info, horizontal resolution, and vertical. All right. I'll just do it like, well, 
Do it like that. So we'll see what that looks like. I believe these are UNT32s though, even though the text mode ones are int 32 I guess the GOP was standardized later and they saw the error of their ways for negative modes. But that's all right. Make that a little bit more succinct, okay. So what does that look like? We have a bunch available, it might scroll off the screen. So yeah, it did scroll off the screen, but we have a bunch of 1280 by 800s, which tells me that's Probably not uh, getting the right info, <laughs> of course. Because what am I querying the same mode again and again? You don't want to do that. We want to query I, my dude. Zero less than the max. We want to query the specific mode that we're given. What was it before? That is a standard you went in, right? Yeah, okay, you went 32. I think the info was correct, but we need to get the actual mode right. Hey, that looks like some different numbers, <laughs> some lower numbers to the top and better at the bottom. So again, zero to mode, zero to max mode minus one is correct. So this is correct. The top mode I have in QEMU here, 2560 by 1600, without any other info, of course. But this shows that you can get various other modes here. We might only be interested in like top and bottom ones or something. You might be able to limit things. We might want to set text mode first would probably look better, so let me try that. So let's set text mode to the highest available so we can print more stuff, up to 42 rows on the screen. Then I'll escape and go back, that's why I set up the menu sort of system. And hey, we can fit everything on the screen now. So pixel format one, scan line 1280 by default, and we have all those. And I'll probably print more horizontally to take up less vertical space, but uh, I am gonna call it here. I did wanna, you know, get further along to set modes as well and make a menu. But what, what I want to handle, probably on the next one, is going to be making these available modes at the bottom. So we have the mode number. You know, I might make the text a little different. We don't need to print mode number every time. That's um, redundant. But like how on the main menu, um, and of course this is, this is gone now, right? Because <laughs> I put a while one here. So like on the main menu here, I can do up and down with the arrow keys and enter to select. I want to do that same thing where I highlight the row and press enter to set a graphics mode and eventually text mode as well. But graphics is interesting right now. So I want to highlight these mode number rows with the arrow keys and press enter. So it'll be similar to the main menu sort of thing, except the, the bounded cursor rows for these available GOP modes will start when it starts printing the mode number. So instead of the minimum row being zero, it'll be whatever the first available mode is, right, for that text. And the last mode would be at the bottom or something, you know, minus keybinds if I print those. So um, it, it'll be the same logic. It's just you offset the minimum row according to however far down the screen this sort of menu is printed, if that makes sense. So I want to do that on the next one, set GOP modes by calling set mode and using a sort of better UX, like choosing it like in a menu um, in a loop so we can, you know, see the info every time like the text mode works. And then after that, I want to get mouse support working, which I have not gotten working in QEMU, but I have on my laptop. So we'll go with that. We'll connect controllers if we need to. Otherwise, we'll just get the simple pointer protocol similar to this GOP using locate protocol, we'll say, or opening or connecting if we need to and, and testing that out to try to do a blit test maybe as well for clearing the screen to a color and for drawing like a box for a mouse cursor, we'll say. So we can try that stuff. And I'll do that on the next one. So thank you for watching. And I know I talked way too much about the spec again this time and it took a while to get to this point, but I'm slow and make mistakes <laughs> and that's okay. But thanks for watching, greatly appreciate it. I will see you on the next one. And eventually we'll do other things for checking protocols. Instead of using locate, I'll use locate handle buffer and open protocols. I'll do that later on for like block IO to find out um, hard disk partition info, we'll say, because I'll that'll be useful later for writing uh, your OS or kernel to a partition on a separate drive. So we will do that later. This is just starting off easy with locate protocol. But anyway, I digress too much. Um, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Drink more water when you're talking.